Now, the ANC is expected to outline the future of NEC member Derek Hanukom tomorrow. This is after the party's ordinary NEC meeting at the St. George's Hotel over the weekend. Well, despite this, the Veterans League is standing by Hanukom. This follows what they call a public attack on him by ANC Secretary General Ace Mahashule. Let's explore this further. We're joined by a Veterans League member, Paolo Jordan, who's one of those that gave his signatory uh, to this statement that was issued by the Veterans League then a little bit earlier on in the day. Thank you so much uh, for your time, Mr. Jordan. Uh, firstly, let's talk about what you know about the processes that may be underway where Derek Hanukom is concerned. What have you been told? I've been told nothing. Why should I be told anything? I'm asking in terms of this NEC meeting and disciplinary action being taken potentially against Derek Hanukom, have you, uh, has there been anyone who's been part of those meetings who's uh, confirmed to you that the party may or may not be considering taking action against Hanukom? No, I haven't heard anything. Uh, we issued our statement on uh, Saturday morning as veterans, and our intervention was stimulated by an issue of principle and values. What is at stake here? Derek Hanukom and some ANC MPs who were trying to uphold long-standing ANC principles and values felt that we sh they should act together with other parties to have the former president uh, removed from office. We felt that Hanukom and those others were acting on the basis of principle and were upholding the principles of the ANC, which were being subverted at that time. That's why we intervened. No one has contacted us about what happened at the NEC meeting. Like everyone else, we'll get the report when it's officially released. You sound quite surprised at the letter that had been issued from the office of the Secretary General, Ace Mahashule, and the position that he had taken and how he had described Hanukom as a wedge driver and as being divisive. No, Hanukom did not admit to being divisive. Hanukom said that he had met persons from the EFF to discuss how they could act together in Parliament. That's not an admission. You admit to something that's wrong. I admit to a crime. I admit to breaking into your house. I admit to stealing money. That's what I admit to. That's when you've done something wrong. The word admission in itself is loaded. He admitted nothing. He told people what he had done. You, you also describe in your statement that you see this moment as being a time of peril for the ANC. Given the fact that you felt strongly enough about this to issue a statement in support of Hanukom, um, are you anticipating that should the EFF release the names of others who they say were also um, lobbying them to help get President Jacob Zuma out, do you think that's going to um, get set in even further divisions? No, no, no. <laughs> you see, the EFF is playing a silly game because they think that uh, people like Derek would be embarrassed about the fact that they wanted to uphold ANC principles. Uh, so they tried to blackmail ANC members by saying, oh, no, we have this list, we have this list. That's an old McCarthyist trick. The junior senator from Wisconsin used to play that in the 1950s all the time with the United States. I've got a list of so many members of the State Department who are communists. I'll give you two. And then he'll wave his list about, you see, and other people will be intimidated. Those are the tricks that the EFF is trying. Those are silly tricks. They are dirty tricks. They are the tricks of McCarthyists. Those people have got nothing to be ashamed of. But why do you think the EFF would be playing this game, as you call it, with the ANC? What's, what, what, what's in it for them? 
Because the, e, the, because the EFF uh, think they are clever and they are a potentially destructive political force and they think that by playing this game they are going to break up the ANC and somehow undermine the authority of the leadership of the ANC. These are tricks that have been done by uh, all sorts of mischievous people over time. Uh, you name them. Uh, you know, uh, during the time of the Spanish Inquisition, there were characters who used to go around uh, looking at who eats pork and who doesn't. If they caught you not eating pork, they'd put your name down on a list. And then one day, the tokomatists and inquisitions would say, oh, no, we've got this list of people who are Judiciars, and everyone would become terrified. That's the sort of game the EFF is trying to play. It's a cheap trick. But surely the, the perception from the outside looking in is that even without these tricks of the EFF, as you put it, the ANC is nowhere close to being unified, that not only is the organization quite divided, but those factional battles which we saw coming into Nasrug seem to have been further entrenched. Your problem, I think, as the media, is you confuse two things. Have you ever looked at our national slogan on our coat of arms? What does it say? Unity in diversity, which suggests that diversity and unity are not opposites. So there is diversity in the ANC. There are diverse opinions in the ANC. That does not mean we are disunited. We are united in our diversity, just as the South African nation aspires to be united in its diversity. So, so you do people you... confuse uniformity with unity. And that's why you never understand what is happening in a living political organization. It's a movement that is brain dead, where everyone just uniformly follows one line, no one thinks, and it's like, uh, you know, Oh, people responding to a sergeant major on a parade ground. If that's that, not unity, that's uniformity. Sure, if that is then truly the case, then um, the concern that the letter of the Secretary General has raised with you as um, members of the veterans, as it were, would not have raised the level of alarm that it has. No, no, no. We, we are alarmed at the tone of the SGS letter, where he uses terms like charlatan, uh, uh, wedge driver, etc. You see, that's what we are alarmed at, because that, in fact, is trying to deny precisely the diversity I'm talking about in the context of unity. So in the broader then, um, in the broader scheme of things, and when we think about the idea of any disciplinary action being taken, where would you stand if you were at a point where uh, you would advise your organization? Do you think that disciplinary steps should be taken against somebody like Derek Hanukom or even an Ace Mahashule who we've heard has been associated allegedly um, to helping the formation of other political parties issues of discipline are are not by province there is a special committee in the ANC which is called All right, unfortunately, we've lost that line with one of the veterans of the governing party, Paolo Jordan. He's, of course, a signator on that uh, press statement that was issued over the weekend, a list of those in the organization who are saying they've been alarmed by the statement that was made by the uh, governing party secretary general with regard to Derek Hanukom and how exactly uh, they've, managed to, um, they've, they've managed to deal, as it were, with some of the allegations that have come out of the EFF and of course Derek Hanukom admitting to some but saying that they were in no means uh, dis divisive to the money uh, to the mother body okay I believe that we've got uh, Paolo Jordan back on the line uh, Mr. Jordan I certainly hope that uh, you can hear me but my final question to you then is around this conversation where disciplinary action is uh, said to have been discussed over this uh, past weekend when it comes to uh, Derek Hanukom what in the constitution 
of the ANC, do you think, um, would need to happen here that, of course, would allow for the disciplinary action that some of those are saying, well, he must face it, there's no way he can avoid it? No, no, no. If disciplinary action is going to be taken, then Derek will have to face charges at a disciplinary committee, and he has the right to bring a friend along as an assistant to advise him in that disciplinary hearing. So those are regular ANC processes. It's not my business to announce or pronounce on whether disciplinary action could be, should be, and what course it would take. Do you think that there's some um, quarters within your organization that's opening itself up to perhaps making room for the opposition to drive a wedge, as it were? <laughs> there have been people who have been trying to drive wedges into the ANC since January the 8th, 1912. Uh, they're still trying, and uh, very few, if any, have ever succeeded. But to the extent that we have seen prominent members move from the organization and with every uh, uh, split, some may talk about uh, Bantu Holomisa when he left the, uh, the party, some may talk about the COPE uh, split and of course some are already predicting that by 2022 the ANC may face yet another uh, split from the organization. Are these things that you as veterans sit and grapple with, do you think that they may happen uh, at all? There have been splits in the ANC and splits from the ANC since 1912. Uh, 1959, there was a huge split from the ANC and uh, Sobukwe and his supporters formed the Pan-Africanist Congress. It now, I think, has uh, two members of parliament. Uh, there was another split from the ANC after 1994 uh, the United Democratic Movement. Uh, you'll tell me how many members of parliament they have. Then subsequent to that, there was another split from the ANC who constituted themselves as COPE. Uh, you'll tell me how many members of parliament they have. So you see, these things are not alarming if you know the history of the movement and you know the history of the ANC. But of course it also and, comes uh, in, uh, sorry to interject. Each one of these sure. splits. Each one of these splits has looked very promising in the beginning, and they've all ended up croppers. So it doesn't really worry us that much. At the same time, however, when we look at the numbers, especially the kind of numbers that your organization gets at the elections or, uh, you know, in terms of votes, it's very clear that there is a declining margin of voters that are going out to give the ANC your vote. Do you not see that as being linked at all um, to some of these issues that are taking place within the organization? No, obviously these things are linked. Obviously, they are linked. I mean, the most recent breakaway is the EFF. Uh, and uh, the EFF uh, <laughs> looks like a growing opposition party. And it uh, tries all sorts of other methods to try and alienate people from the ANC. But one doesn't worry too much about that, because we know what has happened in the past. But obviously, the reason why people split from the ANC is because they feel that you know, a point has been reached where the differences they have with the ANC are such that they feel they are irreconcilable, so they walk away. But having walked away, it doesn't mean that you are right. It doesn't mean that your fortunes will change. And what has, in fact, historically happened is that the fortunes of all those who have walked away have declined. All right, Mr. Jordan, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there for tonight. Thank you so much for your time. Paolo Jordan, he's one of the veterans of the governing party. Of course, they've come out in um, support of Derek Hanukong for standing by his conscience, alongside many others who are said to have supported moves to uh, try and get rid of former President Jacob Zuma from uh, the organization. Well, we're going to leave it there for now.